Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So over the weekend, I was up at the National Corvette Museum uh, Motorsports Park track in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And this was for the Search for the Ultimate Streetcar event number seven of the 2020 season. And this is the final points event of the year. And uh, ultimately the series will culminate this year with a trip to Coda with SEMA being canceled. Uh, so that'll be coming up here in the next month. But Given that uh, I was on this track a few weeks ago with the Tesla Model 3 trying to chase down Andy Pilgrim's lap in the Porsche Taycan Turbo S, I wanted to see what I could do on the track through this event on a different set of tires. So last time, a few weeks ago, I was on the Kumo ACR, which is uh, only available for the Viper ACR, so there's only two sizes out there, and it's a generally regarded as almost a cheater 200 treadwear tire but I didn't really think it was gonna be much of a difference on the Tesla so what I wanted to do was to go back out on the Bridgestone since this series does not allow the the Kumos and see what I was able to do on those tires and see how close I was gonna be able to get I expected them to be maybe half a second slow uh, but I really wasn't sure how that was gonna play out so I wanted to Give, give it a good go, but unfortunately it looked like it was going to be wet all weekend. And then luckily, uh, on Sunday for the road course session, the last few sessions were basically dry. Um, and I had some mistakes in the third session. Ultimately that lap wasn't as good as it could have been. But I went out in session four and really tried to hit a really good lap. And, and I think, uh, with the exception of maybe one section, I was able to really get almost all of what I could get out of the car. Uh, and actually ended up two tenths faster than where I was at on the ACR. So I actually managed to now close the gap to the Porsche Taycan Turbo S down to three tenths of a second. And I think it's actually probably achievable if I could get ideal conditions and the perfect lap. So with that said, I wanted to go ahead and play through this lap with you so that you can get a sense of uh, how the lap went and I'll, I'll add some comments to it. but. Uh, you know, here we are coming down on the front straight, so this is the first flying lap of session four and really the only flying lap that will be the fastest. So, uh, coming into turn one, you know, using a bit of curb on the entry and the exit, uh, coming out wide on the, uh, on the exit of 1B, utilizing all the space to really capitalize on as much speed as you can. Um, coming here through three and four, uh, really just trying to maximize the exit head down to turn five, which is the fastest corner on the course. So coming up to turn five, this is about 100 to 105 mile an hour entry for most cars. Uh, entered a little slower than I wanted to, but ultimately was able to build some speed in the corner. Uh, so I don't think that was too much of a hurt uh, for the lap time. Uh, coming up in, in here in seven and eight, this was all, this all felt pretty good. Um, Eight especially was a little tricky. Uh, the left-hander there in the wet, uh, coming up over the hill off camber, it's uh, really slick. But uh, no, no issues here in the dry. Coming into ten, um, really try to get that car straight for exit up into deception. Um, just a little lift here in deception to set the nose, and then up over the curb, push out to the exit, uh, and just get on the throttle uh, as soon as possible. To really capitalize on this thing straight. So coming up here, everything's going well. I think this this corner coming up is probably the only real bobble I had on this lap. So coming in, entered very fast on you know up mid 90s, and right there, um, there's a little bit. There was a little bit of a uh, wet patch, and I hit it, and the car just bounced out a little wide, uh, went over the gators on the exit a little bit, but I don't think it was too big of an impact uh, on the overall lap. Uh, and then a little bit of slide there into uh, in the sinkhole. But uh, then here, just uh, just closing up the lap, um, really just late apex, late apex, right over the blue, uh, another late apex here, and just power around to the front straight. And wish I had <laughs> even more power. So coming up to start finish, then you'll see me cross the line at a 2:15. Point six is what uh, what ended up on the transponder time. So again, uh, now I've closed the gap to uh, Andy's lap in the take on Turbo S to uh, three tenths of a second. Real happy about that. I don't know when the next chance will be to get up to this track with the Tesla. 
But if I do and I get some better conditions, I'll certainly see if I'm able to improve even further. Uh, and with that, that's the uh, that's the flyer on the uh, on the road course. And just to summarize the event overall, uh, went really well. Ended up first in autocross, which was actually a little bit damp. That was on Saturday. First in speed stop, which was dry. That was on Sunday. And then third overall on the road course. Uh, and ended up third overall for the event uh, with with DNE factored in. So really good result for the Tesla. It's, it's my best overall finish best segment finishes. Uh, I had won individual segments before, but never never podium on the road course and never two segments. So incredible result for the Tesla. And I was actually at this track for my very first event with the Tesla last year. And that was uh, with the car just on the 275-35 R19 Bridgestone, same tire size that I'm running and same tire that I'm running for this event. And that time I did a 221.4. So now with more seat time in the car and all of the modifications, especially from mountain pass performance with a lot of suspension upgrades, I've managed to get the lap time down almost six seconds. And that's six seconds with really no changes in terms of power. Uh, I think since since we since last year to this year, there's been a five percent increase in power. It's something, but it's not significant. Obviously I didn't add a turbo to the car or supercharger to the car to significantly improve performance. Uh, so really just impressive that uh, that big of a gap um, or that big of an improvement was achievable just really based on suspension uh, and some car familiarity and some software upgrades from Tesla. So with that said, uh, we're, we're moving to uh, Dakota here in a few weeks. So follow along on, uh, on my Instagram. I'll be sure to post some updates. I've never been to Dakota. Uh, it's not really going to be a great course for the Tesla because of all the high speed uh, straights, but it'll be fun. Uh, regardless. So looking forward to that and I hope you guys will check back to see how Dakota goes. Thanks for watching.